the idea of collection has been taken primary. And it's a process. It's an ongoing process. It's like the process that I was talking about when we're appreciating movement, uh, music, where we appreciate the movement of that. So what we're saying is this fundamental thing is like, is that quality. And what we've got to do is to try and develop a mathematics which has that quality in it. That was the, the way we went. Um, now, what I was able to do myself was to show that, in fact, it, 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 it's very strange. I was talking about this at a seminar at King's College London. And I was saying that uh, it, it seemed to me to be something like the way Grassmann was thinking. Now, Gunther Grassmann was a, uh, an, an expert in Sanskrit, would you believe it, but he's also developed mathematics and he's laid some of the foundations of modern mathematics known as Grassmann algebra. So he's, but do you know he couldn't get a job in a university even though he wrote this book which defines all this new mathematics? And the academics felt it was, you know, it was too dangerous to let him loose in academia and he had to do, become a school teacher rather than, than carry on with his research. Anyway, that's just an aside to show you some interesting sociology in, in new ideas in, in science. Yes. They're difficult to get in. But he, 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 was, he, he had a, a very interesting idea that this, this, this guy who was in the audience said, why don't you read somebody's account of Grassman? So I went and read it. I was absolutely amazed. Because he was saying that mathematics is a not, not about material process unfolding in space and time. He says mathematics is about thought. Mathematics is about thought. Not the content of thought, but the form in which we can hold the content of thought. Now, for a physicist, that was mind-blowing. Because I had always believed that what we were doing was doing the mathematics of the movement of material process in space and time. From those original ideas of Grassmann, mathematics was about thought, Mathematics, thought is thought. Thought is about becoming, not being. And therefore, really, we should be talking about becoming and not being, whereas what we always do in Newtonian physics is talk about being. So being is a secondary. But what is more, he showed that there is that mathematics led to the mathematics that we're actually using in physics. But that idea of the process and the dynamism in that activity had been lost. And that's what we pounced on, and that's what I've been trying to... That's where the implicate order came from, from that idea of process. That it's a flowing movement, and it, it, that you don't divide it, but you take the flowing movement as your basic starting point, and then build up a relationship, a new order. And that order then had in it this idea of the explicate order. Because within that order, not everything can be made explicate at the same time. And this was very important. Bohr had a complementarity principle, which he thought was basic to quantum theory. That you could not say where the position of the particle was, if you know where it was moving, if you knew where it was, where it was you couldn't say what it was doing as far as movement was concerned. That had always been, in my mind, been sold to me because we're ham-fisted when we're in the laboratory and we disturb everything. Rubbish. The point is that nature itself is such that it is not possible in principle to define position and momentum simultaneously because they are different aspects of this total underlying process. And it's from this mathematics that the implicate order emerges. And in that mathematics the principle of complementarity becomes not an epistemological but an ontological fact. And it's that which then motivates the implicate order. So the deeper order is not an order which, in which you can explicate everything simultaneously. And when you think about it, that's the way when we're thinking about thought. What am I doing with you now? I'm trying to explicate something which I have implicit in my thought structure. 
Yes. And it's very difficult, as uh, you know. Yes. To try, yes. Uh, but to try and explicate in such a way that it reconstructs what I have implicate in me, in you. Yes. And as an example, in, even in the holographic model, uh, different angles of light produces different. So you can record different images on the same plate. Yes. If you shine different angles. Yes, but you have to pick, pick them out differently. You have to make them explicate. That's right. By using different different angles. angles. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So the same space can actually explica explicate different forms. Yeah. This is where I can follow up your ideas. Yes, from absolutely. That, from absolutely. that example. That's, that's dead right, yes. And then you have a, a sort of a, a three dimensions are all encapsulated. So the dimensionality of your space is even encapsulated in that. We, we had a word for it. Because everything came out of process, we called it the hollow movement. Now Bohm introduced this idea of movement. I prefer the idea of activity, to have something dynamic which is moving. Carl Prebram, a, a neurobiologist friend of mine, said he doesn't like movement because it means something's moving. But Bohm had the idea of movement It was much more general than that. We talk about the movement of a sympathy, sy symphony, the movement of a symphony. So that's, nothing's moving there. The, there's a movement in the music. And so here there's a movement in the physical process. So all physical process is movement, is the hollow movement. And that, if you like, is the ground form, the implicate order from which the explicate order then emerges. Yes. Now, Basil, going back from all this wonderful discussions, just zooming back again, as a human being uh, that is contemplating, trying to understand my own mind process, I can now make a parallel between my own mind. I can now better comprehend what we spoke uh, a brief moments back about if we make a comparison between the model of the consciousness and, the, and, and life and reality as it is. Mm -hmm i.e. in real life we have atoms which makes up this chair, me, the world and the cosmos and in, in my mind there are neurons they're factually existing material pieces then we gradually go up to the thought process mm -hmm. and I will use your word, it becomes more subtle yep. and in nature we see that there's a kind of balance we see that there's a kind of in th 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 there's organization principle somehow that the, the, the DNA is structured by the, uh, the DNA structures the reality that is affected by the reality. So there is this movement. So you feel that there's a dynamism, that somehow there's an organic feel to it, to the yeah, whole. Yeah. Now, we're going to the thought, and we're going deeper. And I realized one thing that the most subtle form of existence in my own personal existence experience is when I am at a stage where I have a more silent mind, when I experience silence. That is not a noise silence by noise, a physical sound, mm -hmm. but it's a silence when I feel when there is no thought process going in my mind, so I am just am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without worrying about tomorrow, without yesterday, just being at this moment, mm -hmm. just being. That is, no thoughts are moving. At that stage, somehow, I can say from my own experience, because the, the feeling of I as Tahir talking to you, because I is also a thought, what well, mm -hmm. we fail to understand mm -hmm. that I is a thought. I think that I'm thinking, yeah, but yeah. as soon as I say I, as soon as there's a thought, as the, the word I is, is a result, it's a product of a thought. Mm -hmm. So when all that ends, then I can understand the concept of wholeness at a level well intellectual act intellectual understanding of the fact is what we've been trying to do yes yeah yeah but it seems like we talked about implicated order as a very subtle order and as it comes to the explicate it becomes more explicate more, more, tangi more manifest more, more manifest tangible, more tangible, and, uh, yes. I feel that in my own experience that that state of silence is a very very subtle level it's a level of pureness in which one could almost say that one, now a question, and I feel that one is closer to reality because your, any thought is a material movement of neurons and mm, fibers. Yeah. Once you, once you um, 
able to sit in silence, when you're able to experience silence, then you're into a more subtle level, which is closer to the implicate order. So uh, just this vision arrived at me. Imagine human beings like black holes, mm -hmm. you know, where there's this three dimension, and we're just like this well, this, this well that from this explicate order, what is special about having this consciousness is the fact that we're aware that we're there, but if you could do that without this fragmentary process of thought, without the me seeing that, mm, just mm. knowing, then it's like every human being is like a, is like a, mi a micro vo vortex, shall mm -hmm. we say, that comes down and probably touches the implicate order, that somehow is in commun direct communication with the implicate order. This is just a kind of uh, a picture, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, and I, and I recall what you were saying to me again and again, that all we can discuss is images which are not the reality, and I'm very cautious, but this mm. is the kind of images and, and uh, uh, metaphors that come to my mind. What would you yeah. say about this? No, I think you're right, actually. I mean, one of the things I, I'm envious of you of is that you have actually reached the stage where you can enter your mind. David Bohm and I used to have this game. He always just say, yes, we really must empty our mind, and I kept screaming at him, but every time I try to empty my mind, it becomes full of thoughts. <coughs> and it seemed to be the opposite of what one wanted to achieve. But there are moments when, when usually when, you're, when you're, your mind and your attention are distracted, that you see something in the background which makes you sort of feel something, that you are, as it were, in touch with some deeper reality. And it's, it, it, it's very difficult to articulate that meaning. Maybe we're talking about the same thing. Absolutely, when yes. When we're talking about that. Yes. But all I know is that my mind is very noisy. Very noisy. Even now I've got words sh shrieking at me from all different directions. Yes. You see, so that, uh, when there is the understanding that every thought is an ex ex explicate order, it's from the explicate yeah. order. I, Every single thought. Now, I can sit down with you and say about... I, I, yeah. Please. No, I think I, 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 I've just... As you're talking there, sorry to interrupt you, but I've suddenly thought that, to me, the, 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 the time when I feel I'm in touch with that kind of reality is when something dawns on me. When I've been struggling with, say, some mathematical formula. I'm, I'm making this rather trivial, but... And then all of a sudden, I... Somehow I suddenly say, oh my God, and in one flash, this disjoint structure suddenly fits into place. Not in a way that it, all the parts are explicate, but there's some deeper structure has suddenly clicked into place. And I always feel that that is where one has begun to touch the implicate order to touch this deeper order, that one suddenly sees all the different manifestations of it without actually having to display them all simultaneously. And I think those are the moments when, but it's not, they're not quiet for me. They're just some sort of tremendous experience of, of elation, of joy. I mean, I've even physically moved by jumping out of my chair once. Oh my God, is that what it is? Maybe that's, that's the different experience. I don't know. Yes, you know, I, I, f I see this in my own reality.